My maker world changed last week when I started my first inline debugging tool for an Arduino sketch. Free of charge, not a bene. You do not know what I'm talking about? Then you must watch at least the beginning of this video. If you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you also want to have it. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. In this video, we will end the cumbersome Arduino debugging process, at least if we use the ESP32. I will show you what inline debugging is and how it works, and how it is done with an ESP32. We all know how we debug our Arduino projects. We use serial print statements to print values of variables or to mark positions in the sketch to find out the way your program travels through the code. This is okay, but has some severe disadvantages. Each time we want to look at another variable or the same variable in a different place, we have to create new print statements and recompile the code. Very time consuming. If your sketch runs fast, we cannot easily trace all information in serial monitor. It's just too much. Finding out which way the Arduino travels through our sketch is really hard. We cannot change variables when our code runs. This would sometimes be a very efficient debugging method. Also here, we have to recompile our sketch. And most important, we cannot stop our sketch in the middle of execution if it loops forever, to find out the cause for that behavior. Inline debugging ends all this pain. It is old technology. I remember we used it in early 1980 with Intel's 8080 processors and assembly language. Back then, such a development station costed a fortune. Already then, the industry started to develop a standard called JTAG. One of its purposes was to enable inline debugging. But what is inline debugging? It makes that we can stop the CPU in the middle of program execution and read or write variables, registers and other stuff. In short, we get a window into what happens inside our microcontrollers and we can remotely start and stop program execution. You think this is a minor thing? Then let me show how it works. Here I have a simple sketch. It loops, switches an LED on and off, and increments three different variables. A global one, one defined in the loop section, and one initialized in a function. If we run the code, the LED blinks and only one of three variables count up. Strange. What is the problem? We clearly see the increment commands in each loop, and also the function is called in each loop. Let's use our new inline debugger to find the reason. Yes, I know that the experienced amongst you already see the problem. Anyway, we press start debugging and after uploading the sketch, the debugger stops right at the beginning of setup. Yes, you see right. The ESP stopped the execution. The LED is not blinking anymore and serial does not print. We can now examine our variables. Global variable is already defined and its value is zero. The other two variables are not yet initialized because our sketch did not reach the respective statements. Here we have our control center for debugging. If I press continue, the LED starts to blink and serial prints, precisely the same values as before. It immediately stops if I press pause. During running, I do not see the content of the variables. If I hit pause, the ESP stops blinking and we see this screen. Because the processor stopped immediately, we see here assembler code. This yellow arrow shows at which address it stopped. We have no idea where this is but still we were able to stop the processor from the outside. If we go back to our sketch, we can insert a breakpoint 
wherever we want. The red dot says your sketch will stop here. Of course, we can add more breakpoints if we wish. If we press continue, it stops at line 39 and should show a yellow arrow. This does not always happen. Sometimes I had to press switch to code a few times. Maybe it's my fault or Ivan and his crew from Platform IO has some work to correct that. Anyway, we see now also the local variable. The functional variable is not in scope here and therefore not shown. If I press continue, we can watch what happens. The loop is executed once, the LED blinks, the variable change. And the sketch stops again at the breakpoint. How cool is that? The next thing is called step over. You could also call it single step. If we press it, the sketch executes one line and we can watch what happens. And really, the local variable is incremented to one. If we continue pressing step over, we suddenly discover something strange. We leave our sketch and arrive in a sketch from the ESP32 core. People who remember the video about dual cores of the ESP32 remember the ESP32 runs a RTOS operating system and the Arduino framework runs on that. And really, here we see an RTOS task. By the way, we see also how the watchdog reset is created. We can forget this excursion and press step over or F10 a few times until we are in the loop statement. Now we have to step into loop again and we are back in our main sketch. After incrementing local variable, it is one again, which seems to be wrong, but it is right. If you define a variable, even without assigning a value, it forgets its value from before, a beginner's mistake. So we know that we have to shift this statement outside the loop. After this change, we should be able to restart debugging. Unfortunately, this is the next item on Ivan's list. But when we stop and start debugging, it works and local variable counts up. Of course, it is no more a local variable now. By the way, delete all breakpoints before you start debugging. They will no more work in the new session, even if they are displayed. If you are on a line with a function, we can either press step over as before to stay on the current level or we can press step into to enter the function. As soon as we are in, we have to use step over to continue on this level. Because the function contains an if statement, we can see which way the program selects. According to LED status, the then or the else statements are chosen. If you are interested in what our ESP does in the digital write statement, you press step into and you are in the bowels of the Arduino platform. You can dig as deep as you want down to the assembler code. If you are fed up with the details, you press step out and you are back where you were one level higher. This also works with your functions. Like that, you can navigate through your running program and always watch what happened to the variables. You even can change variables. For example, the LED blinks faster if we change del to 200 milliseconds. To show you that effect, I want that the sketch continuously run for five loops and then stops. Therefore, I create a conditional breakpoint with the condition global variable equals five. Then I set global variable to zero. This has to be done here. You immediately see the result in the watch zone. If I press continue, the LED blinks five times and the sketch stops again. Really cool. We only scratched at the surface, but I hope you see that chasing errors is fun with such a tool. No more unnecessary print statements and other tricks to influence the behavior of your ESP. 
But what do you have to do to get this functionality? First, we need hardware inside the microcontrollers. And then we need a software on our IDE and an adapter to connect them. When I started Arduino, I missed inline debugging. The Atmel 328 chips used in Arduinos had no hardware to support debugging. Visual Micro once tried a compromise for the Arduino hardware. They created a debugging software which, before compiling, automatically inserted certain statements into the code and used the output in the IDE. With this, we were able to get the feeling of inline debugging, but still with a lot of compromises. They were not able to change the flaw of the Atmel chips. No hardware support for JTAG debugging. Other platforms like ARM offered such tools, but they were very costly, often too expensive for makers. And like most of us, I wanted to stick with all the Arduino advantages and not move to another ecosystem. The ESP8266 and the ESP32 had built-in JTAG debugging functionality from the beginning. Up till now, I never used it because I did not know of software which supported this interface. Until I made the video about Platform I.O. There I discovered that Platform I.O. offered a so-called PIO Unified Debugger based on the open source GDB project. Again, what is GDB? No, it's not a wrongly written gross domestic product, a favorite word of economists. It stands for GNU Debugger. It is the de facto standard debugger for Linux systems and a quite powerful tool. It not only supports our ESPs, it supports many other architectures like ARM and x86. Now I only needed a JTAG debugger interface. Patreon Ristomati suggested using the ARM USB OCD module from the Bulgarian company Olimex. It is not exactly cheap and back then Platform IO also wanted a service fee for the debugger. All in all, still not very maker friendly. But now it comes. Last Wednesday I got this mail from Ivan, the CEO of Platform IO. Thanks to an investment of Western Digital, the Platform IO debugger is now free of charge for makers. Cool! Maybe next time you buy one of their disk drives instead of another brand to say thank you to them. And I found a much cheaper JTAG debugger which seems to be from Espressive and is also supported by Platform IO. It only costs $20, including shipping, and is available on AliExpress. So I had no excuses. Had to roll up my sleeves and invest a night or two. With some help of Valerie and Ivan from the Platform IO team, I was able to prepare what I showed you before. And as usual, if you follow the instructions in this video, you should be able to avoid most of the problems I encountered. First, we have to look at the JTAG connector. Olimex uses a 20-pin and the Espressive board uses a 10-pin header. Fortunately, we only need 5 or 6 pins. They are called TDI, TDO, TCK, TMS and Reset. Of course, we also need Ground. Reset is only required for the Olimex board. The Espressive board has a readable silk screen and you know which pins are which. Olimex provides only a drawing of the connector. Unfortunately, it is mirrored, so pay attention, pin 1 is here. I created a connector for each board with an IDC connector on one side and DuPont pins on the other. The ESP32 uses pins 12 to 15 for the JTAG interface. And you must not use these pins in your sketch. Otherwise you create big trouble. I know what I'm talking about. And here you see why it would not make a lot of sense to use JTAG debugging for the ESP8266. You would not have many pins left for your project if the debugging interface already takes four of them. Now you connect your JTAG programmer to your PC. 
the device manager does not show it because it has the wrong drivers assigned. We have to use Zadig to replace these drivers. Pay attention, if you change the USB location, you plugged your JTAG programmer in. Maybe you have to repeat the procedure. You find a link in the description if you have to install Zadig. In Zadig, click Show all devices in options and search for Olimex or for Dual RS232 and replace the drivers with Win USB drivers. Theoretically, you only need to do it for interface 0, but I did it for both interfaces. Both programmers offer an additional serial connection on interface 1, which can be used to program your ESPs. But this is stuff for another video. Now you should see two new USB devices in your device manager. Next you have to connect the DuPont pins to your ESP32. Check it twice. It will not work with the slightest mistake. As said before, I know what I'm talking about. Next you have to install Platform IO. You can watch my video if you want to save time. Create a small project as shown before or use an existing one. And check that you do not use pins 12 to 15. The last thing you have to do is to add two lines in the file platformio.ini. Yes, you heard right. Only add two lines and your debugger should work. For the Olimex you add this line and for the Espressive board that one. For both you add this line to start debugging right at the start of your sketch. Otherwise you start debugging somewhere in Artos. That's it. As Neil Armstrong said after he landed on the moon. That's one small step for a man. One giant leap for mankind. One last thing. Newer Arduinos seem to also support JTAG. Maybe we will be able to use this tool also for them in the future? I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.